Welcome to our virtual history tour, Horsing Around Burlingame. When your community dates from the late 1800s, it's not hard to find horses in your past. After all, until the car was introduced, the only way to reach Burlingame was by horse or by train. However, in the early days, horses weren't just a means of transportation. For 50 years, they also provided entertainment as well as income. Come along with us today and we'll show you why. This street sign is the only reminder left of one of the most famous horse breeding operations in the United States. A man named William Corbett became wealthy in the 1860s selling merchandise to Americans who had moved west. As he approached the age of 50, he moved to the San Francisco Peninsula. In another era, wealthy men entering semi-retirement might have invested in fast cars. However, in Corbett's time, many chose to invest in fast horses. In the early 1870s, Corbett began to breed race, breed race horses at his San Mateo stock farm, which was located where Burlingame High School sits today. His farm included a three-quarter mile track, as well as a beautiful stud barn made of redwood. The stud barn had a hundred box stalls. In the 1880s, Corbett's farm became particularly known for its most famous resident, the stallion Guy Wilkes. Born in Ohio in 1879, Guy Wilkes had a brilliant turf and stud career. In 1884, he won all of his races. Over his lifetime, he sired 66 foals. His stud fee was as high as $10,000. It's not an overstatement to say that the success of this one horse put the San Mateo stock farm on the map. By the end of the 1880s, Corbett was hosting horse auctions at his farm. Trains full of San Francisco's elite would stop at a little pillbox station at Oak Grove and debark for lunch and the auction. Corbett was rumored to have earned as much as $450,000 from these horse sales, an enormous sum at the time. When one considers that the Burlingame train station was built just a few years later for just $8,000. Meanwhile, at the western edge of Corbett's property, on the other side of the El Camino Real, another type of equestrian development was taking place. While Corbett was conducting his horse auctions in the late 1880s, the land just west of the current downtown area was being used as a dairy farm to supply San Francisco's Palace Hotel with dairy and cheese. The owner thought the land could be made more profitable by building several country homes on it and selling them to wealthy San Franciscans looking for increased leisure opportunities. Five spacious country cottages were built on speculation. They offered a shared horse stable in the middle. However, a severe, severe recession hit the U.S. just as the homes were being finished. So the developer went to Plan B. He met with other existing wealthy landowners in the area, and they formed the Burlingame Country Club. He then took one of the cottages off the market and offered it as a clubhouse. Palace Hotel guests were allowed to stay at the clubhouse and enjoy country life. Horses were kept at the club, as well as the homes of local landowners. Since the club was designed to spur land sales, its members wanted a train stop that was more attractive than Corbett's little pillbox stop at Oak Grove. One of the founding members, William Howard, offered his land for the new train station, but Corbett did not want the train stop moved from Oak Grove. Eventually, the two men compromised and a new train station, suitable to welcome San Francisco society, was built where Corbett and Howard's property adjoined, at Burlingame Avenue. From the time the new station was completed in 1894, it was the hub of activity for the country club set. When the train was due, Fancy carriages and horses surrounded the station waiting to pick up passengers. Fox hunts left from the station twice a week, with horses and hounds galloping across Howard's land to Coyote Point and back. When fox were in short supply, the hounds followed the trail scented with anise, and sometimes a stray coyote got mixed up with the hunt. Mr. Corbett died in 1898, about the same time that railroad heiress Harriet Pullman and her handsome, sporty husband, Francis Carolyn, moved to a 30-room country home on five acres in Burlingame. The Carolyns called their home, located near the intersection of Willow and Sharon Avenues, Crossways. 
Francis, or Frank as he was known, was an active member of the Burlingame Country Club, and the Carolyn's home had a carriage house and stable large enough to accommodate Frank's collection of carriages, horses, polo ponies, and dogs. In the year 1900, the Carolyns threw a memorable and thoroughly opulent party to celebrate the completion of their Crossway stables. Guests were brought to Burlingame from San Francisco by Pullman rail car and then escorted to Crossways via one of Mr. Carolyn's carriages. Women were encouraged to dress like flowers and men were encouraged to wear the pink jacket of the hunt or formal wear. A 50-piece band greeted the guests as did 5,000 Japanese lanterns and 3,000 incandescent electric lamps, specifically strung for the party. The horse troughs were filled with champagne for the party goers, and dinner was served at midnight. It was an evening to remember. However, Frank Carolyn's love for horses and hunting dogs soon clashed with Harriet's desire for elegance and French antiques. When a portion of Corbett's horse ranch near modern-day Burlingame High became available in 1901, the Carolyns purchased it for $250,000 as an investment, renamed it Crossways Farm, and in essence allowed the property to become an extension of the Burlingame Country Club. It was this sporting life of horses, hunts, and polo surrounding the train station that prompted the local historian Frank Stanger to write later that before the great earthquake of 1906, the name Burlingame was associated not with a town, for there was none yet. It stood instead for the spectacular peninsula play life of San Francisco's richest social set. Competing interests to the equestrian and leisure way of country life began to emerge in the early 1900s as a streetcar line opened that made commuting to San Francisco a possibility for the average worker. In anticipation of a new type of housing demand, William Howard made the town's first subdivision, south and east of Burlingame Avenue. The lots he offered for sale were decidedly modest in size. Tradespeople began to build home, homes in the area that once were the exclusive domain of the wealthy. To accommodate people who did not have huge properties or staff, livery businesses sprang up allowing people to rent buggies and board horses. When the Burlingame Country Club decided around the turn of the 20th century that it no longer wanted the responsibility of caring for its own fleet of horses, its stable master, Fred Bakewell, opened his own livery at the northeast corner of Carolyn and Oak Grove, where Corbett's barns once were. The livery serviced out-of-town polo teams who shipped their horses to Burlingame to compete at Frank Carolyn's newly purchased Crossways farm. A child of one of the livery employees remembers the strange animals brought to Burlingame to accompany the excitable polo ponies and calm them an anteater from South America, a monkey from Chile, and goats. The one animal that that girl always steered clear of was an ostrich, especially after it kicked a stable hand and sent him to the hospital. With the flood of people who moved to the area from San Francisco after the great earthquake of 1906, the polo activity moved south and west to San Mateo and Hillsboro. The Carolins moved up the hill, to the site of the present-day Carolyn's Mansion on Remillard. Yet signs of Burlingame's equestrian past remain, if one knows where to look. Two of Corbett's daughters' homes stood in their original location for many years, and street signs give hints to what once was. Horses and cows roamed free on some properties for decades, and in the unincorporated areas of Burlingame, some horses still can be seen in the backyard of suburban homes. Although he never lived here, we cannot close our tour of equestrian Burlingame without mentioning Burlingame's most famous horse, Seabiscuit, the top money-earning horse of the 1930s. Seabiscuit's owner, Charles Howard, moved to Burlingame in 1925. Ironically, it was Mr. Howard's success in selling automobiles that enabled him to purchase his property in what is now Hillsboro. Today, Burlingame is known more for its auto row than its horses. 
But as this short video shows, Burlingame was once nationally known for its stud farm, the best polo field in the nation, and for its most famous horse, Seabiscuit.